We're recording. Excuse me, Michael. Yes, Mark. I was wondering if you could suggest to all participants to be muted at all times, except when they're speaking. Okay, I, I'll pass that along. Uh, all uh, participants, if you're you're not speaking, please mute, <clears throat> and uh, uh, we will remind you to unmute if need be. Um, but uh, that that would be that would be good practice. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so we're recording and live. Uh, welcome to the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, we are here tonight to uh, review all of the applications submitted this cycle, deliberate that, them, and decide on which will be recommended for uh, appropriation uh, to the City Council. Uh, first off, I'd like to take a uh, roll call, find out uh, and confirm who is present. Mark Rosen. I am here. Don Walters. Here. Chuck Griffin. Here. Tom O'Brien is absent. Joe Morgan. Here. Joe Texera. Here. Jamie Gagnon. Present. Jane Healy. Here. Excellent. Okay, uh, welcome to the uh, meeting that I'll now declare open uh, to members and to uh, members of the public who are uh, attending and listening in. Uh, uh, the uh, procedure tonight will largely be uh, the deliberations uh, among uh, and discussions among the committee members and uh, the, the, the voting. Um, to the extent that there is any uh, non-member uh, in attendance uh, and we come up with a question among the committee members that uh, one of those uh, members of the public or applicants uh, might be able to help us with, uh, we will uh, put that out there and, and ask them to uh, answer the particular question or provide the needed information. Uh, <clears throat> other than that, um, to the extent that there is a member of the public who is not an applicant uh, and you feel there is something important you need to say, uh, please raise your electronic hand. Uh, we will get to you uh, when uh, we are on that particular, um, uh, before we finish that particular uh, application uh, or project that we are then discussing. Um, I'd like to thank the committee members for all the work they've put in uh, and will put in tonight, uh, as this is our, our uh, um, uh, work end of the, of the year or beginning of the year when we have the applications filed, reviewed and, and uh, deliberated. Um, I, I assure you that uh, the number of meetings you've experienced since January will not repeat itself for the balance of the year. Uh, although I would like you to maintain the uh, standard uh, Thursday evening monthly date, which I believe is, uh, Caitlin, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, is it the third or fourth week in, in, of the month that is our usually slotted meeting? Um, you're correct. That is our usually slotted meeting. Um, and I can confirm that um, tomorrow after I take a look at a, a schedule going forward for the rest of the year. Yeah, and what we do is we hold those uh, dates and we'd like you to hold those dates open uh, <clears throat> in case things come up and we need to meet. Um, otherwise, they will, be, uh, they will be canceled and you'll receive uh, information either way, whether we're gonna have a meeting or it will be canceled uh, on that regular monthly schedule. <clears throat> okay. Um, here we go on... Uh, You've received in your packets uh, uh, pieces of information and communications on updates um, uh, and uh, changes to applications and answers to the questions we had uh, given to applicants uh, at the time of their presentations. Um, we can uh, discuss those in connection with 
uh, the uh, that pro project or that application uh, when it when it comes up, uh, and uh, I would I would encourage uh, all to uh, to weigh in on any any uh, any thoughts uh, that uh, they have on the application and the additional information, uh, whether or not those those uh, uh, thoughts have already been uh, uh, shared uh, by email. Um, since uh, we are uh, now in an open public meeting, uh, that is where uh, the discussion will take place. Um, and uh, those short thoughts uh, need, need to be repeated here uh, to the extent that you wish to, to uh, continue to share them. Um, okay, <clears throat> what I'd like to do is, is uh, uh, since I, I, um, I think we don't have the, the economic pressure of more asks than available uh, funds. Um, uh, I, I'd like to just uh, have a discussion one at a time of the, of the applications uh, to get a sense of, of, of where people are. Um, and uh, it, it might be just as easy rather than trying to do a, a uh, uh, discuss among us um, complete dockets where there's a suggestion what uh, one person would do for all applications. Uh, if we would go one at a time, uh, we could then uh, vote one at a time. Um, and if we then uh, look back after the end, of, and we get to the end of the list, uh, we can look back where anybody says uh, that they'd like to uh, change their vote or, or uh, uh, make, a, make a, a different, uh, um, bring up a different issue on one that we've already voted on, then we'll confirm the votes by the whole docket at the end of the, at the, end of the evening, uh, where we'll have the final vote, uh, which encompasses uh, all of the decisions, uh, which to fund, how much to fund, what special conditions might, might be carried with the recommendation. <clears throat> Please keep in mind that what we're doing here tonight uh, this is for you, uh, for our new members, and for any public listening, is we, we cannot appropriate money. We can only recommend to city council which of these projects that we uh, would recommend be funded and in the amount that we recommend may be funded. Uh, okay. Uh, does anybody have any, any uh, problem with proceeding in that, in that manner? because I know that other people have better ideas than me sometimes. Okay, then let's, uh, let's start with the uh, first one on the list here, which is the uh, first time home buyers program from the Affordable Housing Trust. The amount requested is $250,000. Uh, I'd like to open that up for discussion. Any member of the, uh, the, the committee wish to weigh in? Uh, I, for one, am, am happy that uh, uh, the Affordable Housing Trust is as uh, interested, active, and um, uh, experienced in, in the, the, the programs which they have run and uh, this new one which they propose. Um, and uh, it, uh, it, it sounds to me like, like a, a good direction to go in and uh, to uh, look to uh, proper, help people uh, with properties that are uh, otherwise not deed restricted uh, with this uh, uh, disappearing, uh, disappearing loan. Mark Rosen, do you have a comment? Yeah, um, I did a little bit of research because I was concerned that this program, while I think it's a great idea, generally speaking, um, actually doesn't fit the uh, requirements, uh, the uh, valuation criteria for a couple of reasons. Um, it, uh, about the fifth bullet under affordable housing says that programs must address the needs of range of qualified household including very low, low, and low to moderate income families and individuals. Um, 
And then in their project summary, they want to give, disperse money to people who have incomes up to 100% of the area median income. And then the next sentence, the goal of the program is to increase home ownership among low and moderate income house households. Well, moderate income households is less than 100% of the area median income. So they're, um, what am I, what's the word I'm looking for? They're uh, saying, they're saying two different things at the same time that count, you know, cancel each other out. I, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but you can't be 100% of the area, area median income and be considered um, uh, what the state says is low to moderate income families. Um, and there's no other criteria that this falls under. Um, so I, I think it's, a, like I said, I think it's a great idea, but I, I don't think we can uh, pass it under the circumstances where it doesn't fit the criteria that we're supposed to vote on. Um, Jamie Gagnon. I'm sorry, Mark, were you finished? Yeah. Okay, Jamie Gagnon. You're, you're muted, Jamie. Well, I'll hold back on my comments. If we're not gonna entertain this based on what Mark just said, then there's no point in having further discussion, so. No, we we're talk about we're what Mark said first. No, you can you can you can uh, make all your comments uh, now. Address address <clears throat> Mark's concerns if you wish. If not, we can we can hear now, or nope. if you'd like to withhold. Well, so, I mean, my concern at the at the meeting was I asked where else is this program being done, and they said the city of Boston. Um, so it doesn't seem like there's that's real analogous to Newburyport. And then I asked how they came up with two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and they just you know, it didn't seem like there was a lot of budgetary work that went into that. It was just a round number. And it is, you know, kind of the, by far the largest request that we have for kind of a first time program. And I understand that buying property is expensive, but it seems like, you know, quarter million dollars for a program that's not, you know, pervasive in our area um, is kind of a lot for us to encumber, but I'll kind of take direction from the board on this. This is my first vote. Uh, for funding, and I, I want to hear what people have thought about what Mark had to say too. So, thank you, Jane Healy. Um, I went down a similar thought process that Mark highlighted um, and looked into it a bit more because you know this would be the first time that I think we recommended funding for those that are at 100% median income. And um, looking into it, I found that um, according to the coalition technical assistance. CPA funds can only be expended on housing developments that will serve residents who earn less than 100% of area-wide medium income. Um, and so I believe that they are um, following those guidelines or, and it could actually be in the legislation, but I didn't go that far. Um, and so that allayed my concerns on, on, on that. That's all. Any, anyone else with a comment? Oh, hi. Um... Mike, this is Caitlin. May I chime in for one moment? Sure. Um, I would just like to echo um, what uh, Jane said that um, these programs um, can go up to 100% area median income. And we confirmed this um, with the coalition um, several months ago um, and also MHP Mass Housing Partnership. Um, and they also agree that this is an allowable use of um, preservation funds. Okay, uh, Don Walters. Yes, thank you. My only question on the application, uh, I agree with the previous two comments. It's um, really a clarification because in here they say you must not exceed 100% of the high annual 
in the Boston area, as indicated below, it just has the number of household size, et cetera. So my question is, are, is someone absolutely sure that we come under the Boston area as compared to some other areas, such as Essex County, Merrimack Valley, et cetera? So that's my one clarification question I have. Thank you. Hi, again, Caitlin, again, yes, I can confirm that we fall um, under the Boston area mean income. So the numbers in um, the application are correct. Thank you. Um, Mark Rosen. Um, so I'm confused uh, if somebody could help me with this because I'm looking at the criteria. Uh, I don't talk to the coalition myself. I'm a member of a committee that's given criteria and it says it must address the needs of low to moderate income families. And this doesn't do that. So how is it that the coalition, which is not a government entity per se, and why, why isn't it clear in the affordable housing? Can somebody help me with this? Because- uh, Excuse I'm me, Mrs. Andy. Yeah. Thank if you, I could just interject, Mark, if you could just be clear for a second, I maybe I'm missing it, um, but just so I could follow and, and perhaps chime in. Could you clarify where you're seeing this reference specifically? I have a document that Caitlin sent us with the general evaluation criteria. Yeah, I think what might be need to be pointed out here, and this may have been from an amendment to the CPA, but um, these guidelines we've been carrying over year after year. Um, generically here, it might be that the CPA um, has been adjusted or cat caught up uh, where this is actually just an, unfortunately, just an old bullet in terms of the uh, the detail in it. So maybe that's where the confusion is coming from. Um, well, we I would also that. say that the, the, the coalition, I mean, the legislation defines low and moderate income is up to 100% AMI. Yeah, it, it, I guess my point here is that it, it may be a scrivener's error. It may actually be because there have been some adjustments over the years, uh, minor, you know, some minor tweaks to it, and it may yeah. be that that's yes. that it came from there. And I just yeah. don't want to um, see us, you know, get sidetracked only because of something that may unfortunately be in the guidelines mm -hmm. that we should perhaps take a look at well, and possibly correct. So right, but but you know, low, uh, moderate income families are defined as eighty percent, according to the research I did. So eighty percent of the um, income level, um, median income, excuse me. So Mark, I think I think I can I can uh, shed a little light on the on the uh, criteria and the use of the criteria. Andy's correct that this was was generated <clears throat> pretty long time ago um, and it attempted to to uh, follow the um, uh, statute uh, as well as, you know what we were looking at, and it's 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 a cr criteria that um, starts with the assumption uh, that we have an eligible project under the statute and its interpretation, and then in looking at the projects, we're giving preference to uh, in these different areas. It says uh, that they following the criteria. Um, says proposals which address as many of the following criteria as possible will receive preference for the funding. Uh, so in looking down at affordable housing, um, we can look at the one you're reading and it indicates that it could get preferential treatment if it uh, addresses uh, the range of qualified households. That is, we wanted to make sure that, that uh, you know, there was some incentive, um, especially if you had competition among pro projects uh, to, you know, pick out the very low as well as the low and moderate. Um, but in all cases, it still had to meet, the, you know, the, uh, it, it couldn't go above the 100% the, um, uh, of, of the uh, median. Um, and I think it, in, in general, for this type of program, uh, it, it can it can certainly help those who otherwise wouldn't be able to buy into this community, and who are 
uh, in 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 the in the median, uh, you know, at the median, which uh, which is certainly not above the median, and and uh, uh, maybe if they were above the median, they could afford it. Um, okay, but so. you know, I'm um uh, just 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 bear with me one second. It the criteria says low to moderate income, which is some percentage of median. It's not a hundred percent. Low to moderate. It's is is a category. It's not low. It's low to moderate. That's below median income by ten or twenty percent. I'm not sure of the number. Okay. Uh, you know. Um, I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Any other comments? Don Walters? Yes. Uh, again, I think, uh, I know I, I agree with the program, but I will say one thing. I, I do think that the wording may be a bit confused. When I looked at the project summary that was submitted with the application uh, under, under the, the first heading called current down payment assistance program, unless we're not funding, uh, current down assistance program because then there's another sub bullet or bullet call first time home buyer program. I'm assuming they're one in the same, but perhaps not. But it does says the goal. It doesn't say it, a requirement. It says the goal doesn't mean you have to follow goals. Is to increase owner ownership among low to, to earning no more than eighty percent of median income. And then further down, where it talks about criteria, as as was just mentioned, it says you must not exceed one hundred percent of the annual median uh, household income. So. Uh, again, I, I don't think it's a big deal, but I, I think it could have been a bit more clear. Unless I'm reading it incorrectly, Mike. Uh, no, I, th I think, uh, you know, it, it, they, these are two separate programs and, and they're only looking for funding for the first time home buyers in this application. Uh, they're just re reciting this, how it, they gave you the history of the, the down payment assistance program to differentiate it from the first time home buyers in that it's uh, no more than 80%. And, and it's also uh, with the um, uh, deed restricted properties. Um, okay, thank you. That, yeah. that makes sense because it does say the first time 100%. It just wasn't clear to me. And yep. I probably should have read something else. Thank you. I'm, okay. I'm good. Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, any other comments? Okay, uh, hearing then that I, I think uh, uh, what I'd like to do is is uh, entertain a motion uh, for on this project alone uh, uh, to um, fund it and in an amount uh, from someone. And if I can get a second, uh, we'll see if there's any more discussion and then we'll vote on this project. Don, are you still hand up there? Uh, I I was just I wasn't sure um, if I would raise the hand to make the motion. I'm happy to make the motion, Mike. Okay. So, uh, what is your motion? The motion is to uh, recommend to the city council approval of first time home buyer home buyer program in the amount of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Then, any other words you'd like to modify in it? <laughs> no, I second it. Okay. Moved and second. Is there any further discussion? None. Okay, then I'm going to do a roll call. Mark Rosen. Yes. I. Don Walters. Yes. Chuck Griffin. Uh, I just want to be sure of the vote. Uh, yes vote means that we're voting not to approve it. No, a yes vote would be we're voting to uh, recommend approval, and um, in the in the full amount, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That would be a yes vote. Can I abstain because I did not hear the whole presentation uh, by the applicant? Okay. Um, Joe Morgan. Yes. Joe Texera. Joe Texera. Jamie Gagnon. Yes. 
Jane Healy. Yes. See if we got Joe back. Joe Texera. It's a yes. That's a yes. The chair votes yes. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have the Atkinson Common Rock Tower Restoration Project uh, from the um, City of Newburyport Parks Commission, the amount of $59,950. In the category of historic preservation, uh, anybody have any comments to make on that project? No hands raised. Okay. Um, and uh, I will uh, entertain a motion. Chuck Griffin. Uh, I make a motion that we approve it as presented. Okay, that would be in the uh, full amount? In the full amount, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Any second? Second. Okay, Jamie Gagnon second. Any further discussion? Okay, so vote on the motion to recommend approval in the full amount of $59,950. Mark Rosen? Aye. Don Walters? Yes. Chuck Griffin? Yes. Joe Morgan? Yes. Joe Texera? Yes. Jamie Gagnon? Yes. Jane Healy? Yes. Chair votes yes. Thank you. Next we have the Perkins Art and Research Center, uh, Applicant Historical Society of Old Newbury, requested amount 210,000 Two hundred fifty-one dollars uh, in the category is historic preservation. Any comments, Joe Morgan? Thank you, um, Mike. Um, first, my apologies for oversharing uh, in email um, my confusion, which turned out to be uh, quite quite broad. <laughs> Um, and thank you, Caitlin, for setting me back on the right track. So apparently this application has been submitted as a preservation of historic documents, and thereby the request was for the compact storage system to accommodate the paintings and other uh, historic resource documents that are currently um, stacked willy-nilly inside the, uh, the museum. Um, <clears throat> nonetheless, I uh, would like to recommend uh, the full amount as previously submitted based on the additional language that we did see at the coalition website regarding the practicality of constructing a space to accommodate um, uh, archival materials and historic documentation that there is a substantial I think logic for, um, for for completing the full phase work as originally presented by um, by uh, Moon and um, preparing the space adequately as for receiving the the shelving system, and that's I think that was designated as phase one work. So clearly there's more work to come, but it doesn't seem like the work can take place. Uh, as proposed, the, the compact storage work can take place by itself. There needs to be other uh, uh, rehab to the space, as well as, I, I think, a little bit to the exterior of the building in order to accommodate this work. So that's my proposal as, a, as an alternate to what to the revised proposal that came back to us in these last two weeks. Thank you. Uh, other comments? Chuck Griffin? Uh, I wish to uh, take the same position Joe Morgan has. Uh, by doing this work, 
the uh, moon ends up over time getting two and a half more rooms on the fourth floor and uh, there's a much damage being done in the present situation but over a period of time not just with this but other efforts that are going to be needed uh, we increase in a very real sense the usability of the of the house i'd like to to, to uh echo joe uh that uh, uh the issue here is is uh preservation of, of documents and artifacts uh, you know whether document is, is is paper or a painting um that they are uh, not well protected not well preserved and not accessible in any easy fashion without um manhandling them in their present state uh and and with this uh uh system in place uh we are we are preserving those important historical artifacts and documents that will uh, then live in that in that system and be protected and accessible uh in a in a manner that that uh that protects them and uh, uh they don't they don't get uh damaged in man hand any other comments Jane Healy? Um, I guess I need clarification. I have they changed their ask? And if they have, I didn't. I don't see think that. that I don't think it's changed. I yeah. I thought I it was the same amount, and we you know, they're asking for a system to help. Yeah. In they're, the they're basic, of those yeah. Basically, basically they they're asking. It, have they? I don't think they've modified the amount. I think they wanted to, to clarify that they were not asking for our uh, support, monetary support for the other aspects of, of phase one. Okay, that was my understanding as well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, could that be clarified by Moon? Because my understanding is that there were other, there was other work scope included besides the compact uh, shelving. Oh yes, yeah. there's, there's, uh, there are several bullet points uh, that go into it. Um, and uh, they, their clarification came back said, said no, we're 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 asking for the 210, which is the system, at the line item for for uh, purchase and, and installation of the system for storage is 210,000. But I believe the first ask was for other related um, uh, space build out work um, to accommodate that shelving, including some structural. Reinforcement, I believe, some alarm systems or or other things in order to um, to kick off a, a, lar a larger project by readying well, the building. Yes, I think I think that did that did describe those elements were described in the application. I'm I'm looking at it here, but the amount requested was has always been two hundred ten thousand. So I think they were trying to clear trying to confirm and clarify their application by saying, yeah, we've, we're going to do all this because we need to. We have other funding sources for that. We would like you to uh, help us with this system. And that's that's the amount that it's going to cost them to buy it and install it. I see. OK. Um, all right. Well, I have misunderstood. So very good. Then the, the 210 has not changed and it only corresponds to the uh, compact storage system. Correct. Thank Don you. Wal Don Walters. Yes, thank you. Uh, my understanding is just what was discussed. There's the letter from the Museum of Old Newberry dated February 13, 2023. And they specifically state what uh, I think Mike, you just mentioned. So to me, uh, I think it's pretty clear they're asking for the $210,000 only. My question to Caitlin, um, are you able to confirm that in accordance with uh, allocation of CPA funds that this qualifies for it? There's no doubt in your mind on this issue, please. Um, I sent over um, some technical assistance article um, today, just because I know that there were some questions that came up about the preservation of historic um, documents um, as artifacts. Um, and so I'm confident that this is a way to 
preserve those artifacts, um, which is the artwork. Um, and so I sent that over today. And this is somewhat similar, I think, in my mind to the library um, archival project you all approved last year which, with the HVAC system. Um, and so I'm, I'm confident that this is um, a similar to that project. Um, and I will note that we do have Bethany DeRoe present from the Museum of Old Newberry, if you would like to also hear from her. Uh, thank you, Caitlin. Uh, I personally don't need to hear from her. I was just looking for confirmation of, of uh, your evaluation. So thank you very much. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, then I'll uh, entertain a motion. I'll make a motion if you, Mr. Chairman. I move that the, the request for $210,000 by Moon for the uh, storage systems that are proposed be approved. Second, second. This is Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan seconds. Okay, roll call. Mark Rosen. Aye. Don Walters. Yes. Chuck Griffin. Aye. Joe Morgan. Yes. Joe Texera. Yes. Jamie Gagnon. Yes. Jane Healy. Yes. Chair votes yes. Uh, next is the uh, the report custom house masonry repair and portico roof. Uh, applicant is Christopher Silva. Amount requested one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the category of historic preservation. Is there any discussion? Any comments? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve the custom house request for roof repairs on the uh, on the building. And, and the masonry and roof repairs? Yes, thank you. Okay, in the full amount? Yes. Okay, is there a second? Mark Rosen is seconding? Yes. Okay. Do a roll call. Eric Rosen. Aye. Don Walters. Yes. Chuck Griffin. Yay. Joe Morgan. Yes. Joe Texera. Yes. Jamie Gagnon. Yes. Jane Healy. Yes. Chair votes yes. Uh, next, uh, the uh, downtown lighting project, Department of Public Services, uh, in the uh, amount requested is $69,377. In the uh, category, uh, I believe this incorrectly on our list states historic preservation. I believe the um, amended amount and the amended uh, category was um, uh, recreation. Mark Rosen. I, I don't think I had my hand up. Oh, you, okay. My mistake. Any other, any questions, any comments? Don Walters. Yes, uh, I have a question regarding the uh, wattage of the new fixtures. Uh, LEDs are more efficient independent of the word baffles, I think the real word is shielding for uh, dark sky, but in any event, uh, I, I suspect that these fixtures uh, are providing more illumination than the current fixtures because the 65 watt, including, or including the ballast versus 65 watt LED provides more lumens independent of the Kelvin. 
uh, that is specified, i.e. the color of the light. So um, I, I would like to uh, throw it to the board consideration just to keep this moving along that a special condition would be approved that subject to going to the next step uh, or confirming with the um, uh, city's uh, resiliency um, coordinator and, and uh, energy coordinator, Molly Ettenborough, that these lights uh, do meet uh, the goals or whatever's the right word to say for, uh, for, for reducing energy in, in, in Newburyport. Again, I think at the end of the day, uh, the light fixtures will, will provide more illumination per square foot on the surface than the existing ones. And so if, if part of this issue is they want more lighting, that's fine. I mean, that's not, I should say it's fine, but that's a different issue than say 65 watts is similar to 65 watts high pressure sodium vapor because I'm, I'm almost positive that's not the case. So that's my clarification or question, Mike. And Andy Port. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, just to respond to Don, and I, I apologize if we haven't uh, crossed paths on this particular line of conversation, but um, we've had some discussions uh, with Molly as part of that, uh, as well as the city electrician. I, I can't speak to the detail uh, on the power usage, unfortunately. I'm not, it's not my area of expertise, but I do, I do know that we've been looking at that as one of the criteria uh, for the particular fixture here. And um, Kim Turner, myself, and uh, Molly and the city electrician uh, have all been part of that discussion, but we can certainly circle back on that. And uh, I also would be happy to send you the, the cut sheet for the fixture if you're interested. Uh, yeah, again, thanks. I, I uh, Again, I think my, my fundamental question, Andy, is, is there going to be more illumination with the proposed lighting system than, than the existing one? I guess that's the question. It, it, yes, I would say the, there is a little bit more light, I would say, from those fixtures. And you can get a good example of that really looking at the bottom of two to six Merrimack, uh, two to six Market Street. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the, the new fixture that was installed along Merrimack Street there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joe Morgan. Uh, I'm sorry, through the, through the chair, if I could, I just wanted to note that Kim Turner is in the audience and um, may be able to speak to that too if there's any questions, sorry. Thank you. Uh, Joe? Yes, thank you. Um, could you remind me again or remind the commissioners again how this is eligible for CPC funding, um, what pathway and what category is it being presented in? And and, this, and it seems like it's an infrastructure project. I, I don't quite understand how it is eligible for fund, funds. The, um, the uh, amended uh, version of the application in the reduced amount uh, did two things. It changed the category from historic to recreation. Um, and uh, it, it needed to do that because uh, it would not have qualified as historic because we were not um, uh, restoring an historic fixture. We were replacing a fixture. Um, it, I believe the hook within um, the uh, recreation category is the reduction in scope to involve only those three areas which are considered the linear parks, uh, the in street and those two other areas that they uh, uh, identified in the in the amended uh, information, um, su such that we are uh, improving the use and safety of an existing park with these. Uh, additional lamps. Uh, and that's uh, separate from uh, any driving consideration that the city might have for uniformity uh, and sustainability uh, issues in the larger program where they're changing all of the fixtures downtown. So I, I think that's the narrow hook that, that can be used for uh, bettering the lighting and safety in these existing parks. Uh, Andy, do you thank, have another thank comment? You. Uh, no, thank you, Chair. I just would add to that, uh, that there's, uh, generally speaking, I think there's a fair amount of latitude on the recreation category. Like you said, it's underneath that category. 
Um, there's a fair amount of latitude, um, particularly with some amendments that were made to the CPA over the years, um, to allow some more latitude for communities in that in that sort of area. Um, I realize there's been debate, uh, perhaps in the past, about things like stadiums, but um, that's a very different category, I think, uh, than the type of improvements here. There's a fair amount of recreational improvements, um, uh, fixtures, and things like that that go with those facilities that that can be done underneath that recreation category. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I, I'm uh, I'm happy to have Kim uh, chime in to to clarify anything she thinks needs to be clarified. I just wanted to simply ask answer the question about the wattage um, and the amount of light. So the existing fixtures are rated at 65 watts, and these new fixtures are 67. So there is a slight bit of increased um, illumination or foot candles on the ground. Um, and my only um, sort of clarifying response with regard to um, is this throwing off more light and, and is this is energy efficient is that uh yeah they're they're up in the housing where the the actual led comes from they do provide uh they're calling it a baffle which just allows there to be more consistent and direct light down towards the ground which is why there's a slightly more wattage but over time these led fixtures will last a lot longer um, and be more sustainable for the city overall thank you Thank you, Kim. Uh, any other comments? Okay, then uh, I'll entertain a motion. Downtown lighting project, do I have a motion to approve? This is Jane, I'll move to um, recommend funding for the downtown lighting project in the full amount of $69,377,000. This is Mark Rosen, I second the motion. Okay, roll call, Mark Rosen. Aye. Dan, Don Walters. Abstain. Chuck Griffin. Chuck Griffin. Yes. Joe Morgan? Yes. Joe Texera? Yes. Jamie Gagnon? Yes. Jane Healy? Yes. Chair votes yes. Next, we have the uh, application for, drop my paper, for the Open Space Reserve Fund from the City of Newburyport and the Open Space Committee, the amount of $100,000. The category is Open Space. All right, any discussion? No, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a Is motion. It? I'll second Joe, it. Joe Texera moves and Chuck Griffin seconds. Any, any other discussion? Roll call, Mark Rosen. Yes. Don Walters. Yes. Chuck Griffin. Yes. Joe Morgan. Yes. Joe Texera. Yes. Jamie Gagnon. Yes. Jane Healy. Yes. Chair votes yes. Next application is for the uh, Colby Farm Open Space uh, Preservation Project from the City and the Open Space Committee. Requested amount is $51,000. Category is Open Space. Any, any discussion? I don't well, this was for the fence, correct? This is just to dispose of or replace the fence that's on Low Street, correct? Yes, this is the uh, one on Low Street behind that uh, new cluster development uh, right. at, the cor at the corner of Low and uh, Colby Farm Lane. Okay, uh, I'll entertain a motion. This is Mark. I will make a motion to. Um, for the Colby Farm Open Space Preservation in the amount of $51,000. I'll second. Okay, 
Joe Texera seconds. Any further discussion? A roll call, Mark Rosen? Yes. Don Walters? Yes. Chuck Griffin? Yes. Joe Morgan? Yes. Joe Texera? Yes. Jamie Gagnon? Yes. Jane Healy? Yes. Chair votes yes. Uh, next, uh, number eight is the uh, tree replacement project uh, from Friends of Newburyport Trees. Requested amount $7,200. Uh, the category is open space. Um, any discussion? Jane Healy? Um, from what we've learned and researched since um, this application was made, I don't believe that this project is eligible for CPA funds um, due to it being street trees, unfortunately. Yes, it, the, uh, the, the, past, the past projects that we have uh, funded in, in the city involving trees um, are either for existing heritage trees in parks um, or in the cemeteries or under the historical category uh, in terms of restoring the historic landscape on uh, um, Green Street and High Street. Um, but we have, we have uh, not had a straight street tree replacement uh, application uh, until this one, um, and uh, the uh, feedback we got um, from the coalition was that uh, this one was not eligible. And I, uh, I, I'm sorry that it's not eligible, but I think that's where we are. Any other comments? Okay. Do I have a motion? Do we need a motion? Um, yeah, I think I think we, you know, we need to. You can okay. you can move you can move not to recommend. I move to not recommend the tree replacement project by the Friends of Newburyport Trees. Okay, uh, Mike, uh, with with. Uh... <laughs> we have to second the motion. I second the motion. Okay. Now we got it. Don, yeah, you have some, I, some comment. I just would like to know whether the, um, who made the motion and second it, would they uh, agree to amend to say, uh, just say because it is ineligible for CPC funding. It's a bit different than we just simply rejected it. We, in other words, on the merits, we, we really didn't consider it. So uh, just a suggestion to- uh, I'm okay with that, Don. Oh, thanks. Okay. Jamie, you're, you're okay with that amendment? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, take roll call. And uh, this, this is to, to not recommend this project due to its uh, ineligibility. Mark Rosen? Yes. Don Walters? Yes. Chuck Griffin? Yes. Joe Morgan? Yes. Joe Texera? Yes. Jamie Gagnon? Yes. Jane Healy? Yes. Chair votes yes. Next project, uh, Moby Mats for Dune Preservation from the Plum Island Taxpayers Association. Requested amount $6,657, category of recreation. Mike, I had a question. Yes, Mark. They were supposed to get back to us with what was going to happen to the Moby mats that were already there. Did they? I, I believe they did. Kate, Caitlin, did uh, I thought I saw an email uh, where they indicated that uh, PETA actually owns the mats that are going to be moved from that space and reused elsewhere. 
and, and they were going to uh, put them in, in other uh, access points uh, within Newburyport. Within Newburyport, that was the yes. question. That was the concern, and there. Uh, just the question again: Does this come under any of the criteria for recreation? Doesn't seem like it. Oh, I think Jane Healy. Um, again, Mark. I think we're thinking alike because I was like, "Does this really fall under it?" Um, <laughs> so I looked up. Yes, it does. That was my conclusion. Absolutely, for sure. It's preserving um, or and or rehabilitating access um, to a recreational facility. And if you go into the database of um, projects throughout the state, there are dozens and dozens of these along the coastline from, um, for Moby Mass. That have been and, and because of the very limited parking, actually no public parking, does it really serve enough people? That's another question. <clears throat> Jamie Gagnon. Yeah, that was um, that was my concern. You know, the it's basically we're funding a beach access point for residents of that area. There's no real public access, I guess, unless you ride your bike over there, but you have to park your car somewhere else. So it's just limited. Um, you know, population. I think is really using that. You know, I don't know if that's a criteria, but I just seems like it's a good idea for doing preservation, but it's only for, like I said, or like Mark said, for a small population, given that there's no real parking there. Don Walters? Yes, I, I echo the previous two comments with respect to um, accessibility to, to the general public. The second uh, comment I have made, and unfortunately I don't have it in front of me, and perhaps Caitlin knows this, but in the letter that was we received or email received and where it said the Plum Island uh, Peter would would would, uh, would relocate them as, as they see if he, he fit or something like I did not see in that email or the best of my recollection that it said solely in Newburyport. I thought it was blank. So when I read that, I inferred that it could be anywhere under the auspices of Peter, which includes other municipalities. So that would be if in fact I'm correct. That's the second reason why I have reservations on this application. Thanks. I can read a note from, so the note, so it says, um, PETA will determine the revised location of the Moby Mads that best fit the needs of Plum Island for ease of access to the beach for handicap, dune preservation and safety. Um, they do not mention um, to be in New Brayport, just okay. for the record. Yeah, I just I just found that note too, and that's that's exactly what it says. Uh, uh, Joe, this is Andy. Could I chime in there just for a moment? Yes, yes, Andy. Um, just for your consideration, one of the thoughts that I had had looking at this application um, was just whether or not it would make sense if approved, if it would make sense to recommend that the city be, um, and then this maybe goes to the question of where they're used, but um, that the city be the um, recipient, if you will, of the Moby mats, and then be able to pass on. Um, through a partnership agreement, you know, with, with say, PITA, um, where that goes out there, you know, maybe in part to make sure that the city itself has as much control, um, you know, over what happens with these resources, you know, moving forward. I think they're they're obviously a partner with the city and, um, you know, the, the communities as far as the protective actions that are taken out there and, and uh, public access, but I just wonder whether or not uh, that might also address the, um, you know, potential location of the mats because of their use. Uh, yeah, I think it would it would uh, that might do something going forward. I think uh, Don's question and and Mark's question had to do with um, uh, the existing mats. They're going to be uh, repurposed and reused elsewhere, um, and whether or not you know if in fact they're they're PETA, uh assets, uh, you know how how much you know what what uh, authority might we have to say that you can't use them on uh, uh, Newbury section, you know, of Plum Island. And uh, if I may, it's Mark. Um, yeah, Mark. I agree with what Ann, Andy's saying. If if the city had applied for Moby mats for Plum Island, it'd be a whole different story. But unfortunately, we can't change who the requester is at this point, can we? Uh, no, I don't think we can. Joe Texera, have a comment? Yeah, um, wouldn't, I guess, 
being new to this, uh, I would assume that because this is city of Newburyport funding, that these Moby mats are would be owned by the city of Newburyport. Uh, am I wrong on that? Um, I, I think a, that was the issue I was getting at. Not that I have an yeah. issue with uh, with working with partners out there. We may have a, a raised hand in the audience, um, you know, to that point. But um, it was just the the idea that. Um, if the funds are being used here for CPA purposes, which obviously has to be within the boundaries of the city, um, that it would maybe make sense, you know, especially going forward for the city to have the um, the control over that um, directly. I wasn't necessarily recommending that the committee here would uh, force that change, but rather perhaps recommend if approved, um, which I don't object to, that perhaps the city council consider um, and, and our office could touch base with the applicant and just have essentially a, an intermediate agreement between the city and um, and the applicant so that there's, um, you know, recognition that the, the city, to Joe's point, is is where this is originally, um, or I don't know, housed underneath, what umbrella it falls underneath. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I wouldn't think that the city council would approve uh, sending money, you know, um, paying for Moby mats that were going to be used in Newberry or, or wherever. Um, mm -hmm. I would, I would expect that they're going to demand that they be used in, okay, I, in new report. Thanks, Joe. I, I see Rosemary is with us. Rosemary, do you have, uh, can you contribute here? Um, yes, we definitely are going to be using them in new report. And I think we stated that in the application. Um, and one of the reasons why it's 53rd Street is because it happens to be one of the busiest streets um, in new report that people are accessing the beach because of the mats, the older mats that we had that did not belong to us. They belonged to PETA. And because the mats did such a great job of preserving the dune, um, the access road now is longer than the two mats that we had were. So now we're asking for three mats to accommodate the new building of the dune. And basically we said that um, we would be taking care of the mats. They did belong to New Report, but we would be responsible for them because apparently the city asked that of us. And we said we would be happy to do that because we've been doing that with the other mats. The city is not bothered by it at all. Um, we put them down and take them up um, um, pretty yeah. much. And this is Nancy Barrett. We both did this application. Um, also, I have a letter from PETA because Julia had requested it, that in the case that we weren't able to put them down or take them up, PITA would be responsible for them. So as, as I understand it, the uh, folks, the interested folks that are close by, residents uh, have taken on the, the annual uh, take them up, store them and put them back down. But if they, if they can't or in the future won't, then PETA would do that um that perform that service um that's the, correct. The, the the question i think that has been raised is um the the um the ability of the city uh to have a say in uh where in the future these mats will be used oh um, these the what the ones that they were questioning the, the current mats that we have are the ones that belong to pitta and they right. will be moved. The new mats that we're hoping to get tonight um, would remain here on 53rd Street. They would not be moved. Okay. Um, Name the streets. And you know uh, what? I, I want to just emphasize too. It sounds like it's only one street, but it accommodates many. I mean, hundreds of people use the mats to get to the beach. They come from the basin. They come from far and wide. It's like um, one of the busiest spots on the beach in the summertime is at the end of 53rd Street because of the accessibility of these mats. They come with strollers, wheelchairs, um, kids on bikes. I mean, it's just been a godsend um, for a lot of people to be able to get to the beach. And it's not just 53rd Street. I don't want you to think that that's all we're trying to accommodate. It's people from the basin. It's people from um, 55th Street is not accessible because of a structure that is not handicapped accessible. So those people come um, from there also. I mean, it's really 
um, way more than I think we gave the impression of um, without mm -hmm. realizing. So yeah, it's it's not just for the residents of 53rd Street. Mm -hmm. uh, they probably are the least ones using it. Um, it's all the other communities, um, especially from the basin side. Yes. Um, for them okay. to access the main beach. Uh, thank you. I, I think we have some more hands up from the committee. Uh, Don Walters. Yes, thank you, Mike. Um, I, I think Andy's suggestion was a good suggestion with respect to if, in fact, this was approved, that the disposition of the map that we're paying for uh, could not be repurposed or would only be repurposed to another area subject to the, the city and Newburyport approval, which I would think we could make that uh, condition. Um, yeah. Aside from that, the, 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 the fundamental issue, and, and I did understand that the, 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 the use of these would be used only for streets right around there or the base, whatever. But to me, it's, it's the definition of recreational park of, of how encompassing does something have to be for the general good. And I struggle at this point to say that this is really for the general because there is very little accessibility uh, unless one walks far distances or if there was a bike, there's not even a place to lock your bikes up like a bike stand or something. So independent of the disposition uh, that we just discussed, I, I think I have a perhaps a more overriding issue of, of the applicability or the use of general funds for what I consider a very small percentage of the population. Thanks, Mike. Hey, Jamie Gagnon. Respectfully, I disagree with you. We even have people with bikes coming and attaching their bikes to the hurricane. They, they don't lock them, we live on Vermont. Yes, and also too, <laughs> cars and trucks are coming up to the end of the street and depositing their goods on the Moby mat so that they can get to the beach. So For the day. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I wish somebody on the committee was from Plum Island so you could come down and understand the need and the preservation of the dunes, which we all need to do, as you see what's going on in the riverside here um, with houses being destroyed from the water. So um, I, I really wish there was someone from Plum Island on the committee. Well, I think we all spend a fair amount of time on Plum Island. Um, how how close is the nearest public parking lot? Is that at um, the point? That, that is the only public parking lot. At the point. Yes. And there's no parking on 53rd Street for the public, correct? There's no public parking, no. The city doesn't. Okay. Yeah, actually, we have, um, we have a neighbor who would like to speak right now, and um, she's unfortunately not able to unmute. Can you help her with that? Her name is Corinne. Uh, I can't. Um, I've just unmuted Corinne. Oh, hi, thank you. Thanks so much. Hi, um, my name is Corinne Flaherty. Um, I live on 53rd Street, and I just wanted to um, have the opportunity to just provide a little history with regard to um, uh, beach access in Newburyport on Plum Island and the Moby Mats and 53rd Street specifically. Um, in 2016, 2017, the city received a grant just, uh, just upwards of $130,000 to, um, study their public access ways. And as a result of that grant, they identified seven public beach access ways in Newburyport and 53rd street is one of those seven public beach access ways. And they put signs up at those seven sites. Um, and they put, um, Moby mats down and, um, roping and fencing, but they ran out for 53rd Street yep. and 53rd Street never got their Moby mats. And 50 uh, of those seven access paths, one at the point is completely eroded away now, it's, it's gone. Uh, the second up there is only accessible at low tide. The third that's closest to the lot is very severely in danger of being bisected by erosion from the mouth of the river. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it happens before the spring uh, and that path will no longer be accessible. That leaves four paths left. Two of them, uh, 61st and 65th, run through an expansive length of dune that does not have a Moby mat and no one wants to walk through the desert to get to the beach on a hot July day. So people don't really use those access points, plus they're not handicapped accessible. 55th Street has a ramp that was built by the city and it's a big metal ramp that has a staircase that you have to go up to get to the ramp. And the ramp has to be manually lowered and raised every year by the DPW in the spring and the fall. And a lot of times they don't get out here before the beach traffic starts. So that leaves 53rd Street and 53rd Street is the shortest access point. And people drive up their cars from all over this part of Plum Island and drop off a person and a cart and all their stuff 
And then that person carts everything over the path through our dune, through the 53rd street path rather. And it happens all day long because that's the easiest place, the shortest place to get onto the beach. It's also the place that the emergency vehicles come on. If somebody breaks an ankle, if there's an issue, if they're, the, I've seen um, the animal control come onto the beach on that access point. Mm -hmm. it, it's the only one in Newburyport really left that's easily accessible. And the city was supposed to have put these mats down back in, you know, 2018 or so, and they didn't. And Pitta Hall was kind enough to lend us their mats. And the dune has built up as a result. But what's going to happen is when Pitta Hall takes those mats to put them in other parts of the city that are, or, or, or the Plum Island that are having erosion issues worse than ours, our dune is then going to start going down. And if you look at the flood maps, the neighborhoods behind the dune on 53rd and 55th are the lowest lying neighborhoods in on Plum Island. The third lowest lying one is now gone. That was Reservation Terrace. So we need these dunes, like we need them because if the water breaches those dunes, we lose our sewer, we lose our water. This isn't just about beach access. This is about protecting these primary dunes that we need in order to have you know services out in Plum Island. It's really, it's such a bigger issue. Um, but, and it's something that I understand people on the committee wouldn't understand if you're not here, you know, we're just watching the trucks back up down 53rd street all summer long. And the idea of losing that Moby mat and not having something to replace it, we'll be right back where we were. And when I moved here in 2011, this point of order. Yep. Sure. Uh, this is going way beyond the scope of our con of what we're here to do tonight. Okay. Okay. Mark, we're, we're almost, we're almost there. Um, Corinne, can you can you finish up for us? Sure. I just wanted to emphasize the point that this is, you know, this is a one of Newburyport's last remaining public beach access points. And if you take a, a map from City Hall that shows beach access points on Plum Island, 53rd Street is one of the seven on that list. And three of them are nearly inaccessible or completely inaccessible. So we need the map for all the people that are coming out here that are using, you know, this access point to get out onto the beach. Uh, thank you, Corinne and, and Rosemary. Uh, Jane, Healy, you have a comment? Um, thank you, Corinne, especially that context was extremely helpful. Um, is there any signage that says that that is a public access? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, there's a sign at the end of our street that says that. Okay, all right, thank you. Sure. Joe, Joe Texera. Joe, do you have a comment? Thinking about I, do. I gotta get to uh, unmuting myself. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you, Corinne. I had forgotten about the uh, the designated public ask access uh, points on the island and uh, at least in Newburyport. And um, I I don't think it's I honestly don't think it's that relevant that there's uh, the parking lot is as far away as it is because. The, the folks there are, um, you know, they're the public too, and they're the, uh, oh, good. A, lot, a lot of taxpayers too. And uh, it, is, it is a heavily used area. I know it's not in our purview with, uh, you know, uh, to, to limit erosion, but um, it's very important to have the, the Moby mats because they really do save these, uh, these pathways. Thanks. Thank you. I think it is our purview to uh, uh, preserve where we can a recreational asset and also provide access to it. And, and uh, these, these mats in this location do that. They seem to do it for um, a significant number of people and a significant number of, of uh, 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 Newburyport taxpayers that uh, uh, often don't, don't get uh, uh, the full benefit of uh, uh, many other projects that, that that we've funded over the years. Um, uh, Jane, do you do you have another comment? You got it. No. No. Okay. Sorry. Good. Uh, any other question comments from the committee? Okay. Then uh, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, fully fund the Moby Mat. Uh, project. This is Jane. I second. Okay. 
Any further discussion? Okay, roll call. <clears throat> Mark Rosen? Absolutely yes. Don Walters? No. Chuck Griffin? Yes. Joe Morgan? Yes. Joe Texera? Yes. Jamie Gagnon? Yes. Jane Healy? Yes. Chair votes yes. Okay. Next, we have uh, the bike feasibility study brought to us by the City of Newport Parks Commission. Um, the amount of $5,750 in the recreation category. Uh, is there any discussion? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. It's Mark, I so move to uh, approve the uh, bike feasibility study in the amount of 5750. Second the motion. This is Chuck Griffin, I second it. Hey. Any further discussion? Yeah, roll call, Mark Rosen. Yes. Don Walters. Yes. Chuck Griffin. Yes. Joe Morgan. Yes. Joe Texera. Yes. Jamie Gagnon. Yes. Jane Healy. Yes. Chair votes yes. Next item, Cashman Multi-Sport Courts Resurfacing. The Report Parks Commission, the amount of $61,271. Category is recreation. Any discussion? I'll entertain a motion. This is Chuck Griffin. I, I move that this be approved the multi purpose courts at Cashman Park. I second it. Is that both in the full amount? Yes. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mark Rosen. Yes. Don Walters. Yes. Chuck Griffin. Yes. Joe Morgan. Yes. Joe Texera. Yes. Jamie Gagnon. Yes. Jane Healy. Yes. Chair votes yes. Next item Atkinson Common Tennis Court Resurfacing. The report Park Parks Commission and Department, $49,557, category is recreation. Any comments? I'll entertain a motion. This is Chuck Griffin. I vote that we approve the resurfacing of the tennis courts, multi-purpose courts at, at Atkinson Common. So the, the, those are multi-purpose courts. The in, tennis. The, in the full amount. Yeah, okay. these, these are the tennis court resurfacing, Chuck. Okay, but some of these we're having to put in uh, other markings for pickleball. No, no. not in Atkinson Common. Okay. Yeah, not in Atkinson. So this I, would be I just the correct. resurfacing of the Atkinson tennis courts. I agree yeah. with the language for the full no. amount. In the full amount. Okay, is there a second? This is Jane, I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call, Mark Rosen. Yes. Don Walters. Yes. Chuck Griffin. Yes. Joe Morgan. Yes. Joe Texera. Yes. Jamie Gagnon. Yes. Jane Healy. Yes. Chair votes yes. Next item is Woodman Park Accessibility Project, the Report Parks Department, $57,570. Category is Recreation. Any general discussion? I'll entertain a motion. Chuck Griffin again. I move that we uh, approve at the full asking price the Woodman Park uh, 
request for accessibility. And it's second. Mark, I second it. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call, Mark Rosen? Yes. Don Walters? Yes. Chuck Griffin? Yes. Joe Morgan? Yes. Joe Texera? Yes. Jamie Gagnon? Yes. Jane Healy? Yes. Chair votes yes. Uh, don't get excited, we're not done yet. Um, <laughs> as, a, as, a tech, as a technical matter, uh, we need to uh, vote to recommend that the debt service be paid, honored and paid, uh, that's the existing debt service, um, for the stadium bond payment, the amount of $122,880. Uh, the Cherry Hill bond payment, $11,540. The Fuller Field bond payment in the amount of $48,750. Um, and I guess we also recommend or vote on recommending uh, that once the Market Landing Park bond and the Bartlett Mall bond get out on the street, that we uh, recommend that that debt be serviced up to the amounts that we show on, on our, our budget. That's 270,000 um, as the uh, initial service for the Market Landing Park. Two hundred thirty-five thousand per ballot Bartlett Mal bond. Um, so uh, let me do this. I'll just I'll just move that we recommend that the uh, outstanding bonds and the to be issued bonds for Market Landing and uh, Bartlett Mal uh, be recommended to be paid when due. There a second? I second. second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call, Mark Rosen? Yes. Don Walters? Yes. Chuck Griffin? Yes. Joe Morgan? Yes. Joe Texera? Joe? Yes. Jamie Gagnon? I'll abstain. Okay. Jane Healy? Yes. Chair votes yes. Uh, finally, uh, also within, within the budget is the um, ad administrative um, costs that, that uh, we have been maintaining for the last umpteen years at, at the level of $12,000. And uh, we are having increased in costs, both for dues to the coalition and to the uh, uh, rates for our uh, note takers. And I'm sure also for the annual advertisement for our annual public uh, hearing. Um, so the suggestion uh, is to increase that by $2,000 to $14,000. So uh, I recommend, I, I move that we recommend uh, administrative fees for FY24 uh, be uh, 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 appropriated at $14,000. Is there a second? I second it. Okay. Any discussion? <clears throat> Roll call, Mark Rosen? Yes. Don Walters? Yes. Chuck Griffin? Yes. Joe Morgan? Yes. Joe Texera? Yes. Jamie Gagnon? Yes. Jane Healy? Yes. Chair votes yes. Uh, I believe that since we have gone through each and voted separately on each uh, um, application and we have results and, and recommendations, 
Uh, we need not go back and do another vote on the full docket. Um, uh, other than the specific conditions that were uh, put on one or two of those uh, applications uh, and recommendations, do we have any, uh, any additional general conditions you'd like to impose uh, across the board? Uh, okay, I, I would uh, like to make sure that uh, within our proposed order that uh, we indicate that the uh, uh, life before uh, requesting extension on any project is 24 months rather than 12 months. Oh. Um, and I believe that that's what we put in place last year. Uh, uh, Caitlin, if you could remind me, do we need to actually vote on that now or did we do that last year? Uh, you did that last year. Okay, thank you. Yep. All righty. Um, and of course, we will still impose the obligation of quarterly uh, re reports and updates on the status of these, these uh, projects. All right, thank you all. We're not done yet. <laughs> uh, we have requests for extensions that were in the staff report that you saw. These are various uh, outstanding Standing, in other words, unexhausted projects that still have uh, balances outstanding and some projects that haven't gotten started yet that have all passed uh, uh, and some several times um, their uh, then um, duration of 12 months uh, to completion. Um, and they are uh, in, in, in this group is, is uh, I'd like to entertain uh, a request to extend for another 12 months uh, each of each of these uh, each of these projects. Um, uh, so uh, as a as a, a list and it's in in the staff report under grant extension requests, uh, I'd like uh, to uh, move that we um, uh, recommend uh, to the mayor to uh, um, agree with the applicants uh, to extend for an additional 12 months uh, each of these applications. Is there a second? Chuck Griffin, I second. Okay, any discussion? Uh, Jane Healy? Um, <laughs> sorry to make the, the meeting go a little bit longer, but I've been curious about the historic structure survey update in 2017. I haven't heard anything on that. And I was wondering if that is still indeed a project or not, and if we should extend that. Andy, are you still with us? Uh, I am. Um, I, folks, uh, I am sorry, I have a lot on my plate. And so unfortunately I have not been able to get out an RFP uh, for the consultants to do that particular project. I think I could work with Caitlin um, we, we recently sent out an RFP for a housing plan, so I think we could work out that template. Um, but I have not, just because of uh, the numerous things that are always going on, it's always just been have to be put on the back burner for me. Um, the applicant, I think the original assumption from the Historic Commission uh, was that our office would assist the commission with it. Um, and I, I don't know that they had uh, closed that loop at the time when they were making that assumption, but we just uh, unfortunately had not gotten around to that. So. Um, I apologize, at least on my behalf, um, for not having uh, been able to send that out yet, but um, we were having a little bit of back and forth with the Historical Commission over which, um, how to uh, prioritize the, um, which properties or which types of uh, structures they'd like to focus on, and we got a little bit bogged down in that discussion, and then I had to sort of put that on the back burner with a bunch of other things, so um, I have not been able to just circle back to get that RFP uh, finalized and out, but, um, but we can uh, scramble around to, to do that. Um, it's Caitlin. I can also add that we have been making progress on this project as a whole um, because we applied for matching grant funds from Mass Historic Commission and did get those funds. So we do now have 30,000 in funds for this overall project. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion? Am I correct that I got a second to that uh, someplace? I no. think you did. I did. I. Oh, Chuck. Uh, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck did. Sucked, okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion? None. Okay. Roll call. Mark Rosen. Yes. Don Walters. Yes. 
Chuck Griffin. Yes. Joe Morgan. Yes. Joe Texera. Yes. Jamie Gagnon. Yes. Jane Healy. Yes. Chair votes, yes. Okay, number five on uh, CPA application review process. I'm gonna be real quick about what we have in mind here um, and uh, ask quickly for some help. Um, it, it, this year um, and a little bit last year, we've, we've, we've run into issues that uh, uh, when we're, we've already got a full application in hand, uh, we are struggling with researching eligibility issues. Uh, and getting getting feedback uh, on on technical readings of the statute from the coalition, et cetera. Um, many communities, uh, we uh, Jane did did some research and found many communities actually do a two step process, where uh, applicants uh, send uh, with an earlier due date send in just a general uh, uh, summary of what they're intending to ask for, uh, and for. Uh, the scope of their projects, uh, and a preliminary vote meeting and vote is made after uh, the committee does any necessary research on eligibility, uh, not not any of the merits or anything or the amounts, but just the eligibility uh, on that scope of work, um, and then uh, have the people um, that are deemed eligible or voted eligible. Uh, continue with the full application process, and uh, we, we don't have the, uh, uh, the scurry about um, right after the full applications are received on eligibility questions. Uh, so here's, here's my ask. Um, I'd like uh, the planning department and, and, and Caitlin as the lead um, to work with a couple of our committee members to figure out uh, how best to uh, amend our processes and suggested due dates that give everybody enough time to, for us to prelim to do the first meeting on eligibility and then uh, get to, get to the uh, full applications, uh, and then uh, later in in the year uh, we can discuss amending the process uh, with the findings of of that subgroup uh, and uh, uh, and and vote. On, on on the best process to go forward. Uh, so is is there are a couple people that could could uh, could work with the planning office on that? Jane, is that a hand that was up be from before? Or, and no, I, that's I, a newly raised one. I'm okay. Not I was gonna I was gonna count it anyway. Um, <laughs> can it, can anybody else help Jane? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, Jane, why don't you pick somebody you'd like to have work with you? <laughs> I don't want to show my hand. Yeah, right. <laughs> Selective volunteering. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. Joe, you going to help? I'll help. Yeah, <laughs> you, you don't have anything Yay. else to do. <laughs> okay, Joe. Thank you. And uh, we'll get a report back and we'll discuss and, and, and see how best we can do that. All right. Um, I don't have any, any other updates. Um, we all saw the earlier uh, emails about uh, reminders of open meeting law issues. Um, uh, we have uh, the approval of the minutes from uh, uh, February 16. Uh, <clears throat> I'll move to approve. Is there a second? I second it. Okay, quick, uh, we go for another, uh, any discussion? No, roll call, Mark Rosen. Yes. Don Walters. Yes. Chuck Griffin. Yes. Joe Morgan. Yes. Joe Texera. Yes. Jamie Gagnon. Yes. Jane Healy. Yes. Chair votes yes. Okay. Mike. Uh, yes. Mike, this is Don. Um, yeah, sorry Don. for the interruption to you and to all. Uh, but this is going to be my swan song. Um, no later than May of, of this year, I will no longer be a member of the planning board. And as such, I will no longer be a member of the, of the committee. I just want to let you know that truly has been a great experience working with all of you. I'm not sure it's been reciprocated, 
but non <laughs> nonetheless, I uh, I really did enjoy it, and I think it's a it's it's a great effort, and I've always recommended to other planning board members that uh, they would be well served to to be a member of this committee. So thank you, Mike, and thank you, everyone else. Thank you, Don. Thank, thank you, Don, Don, for all your work. And thank thank all of you. This is this has been a a very uh, very smooth um, getting to this place. Uh, what we do next is is you don't have to do anything except keep those dates open in case we need to do another meeting uh, in connection with the uh, city council approval process. Uh, we will there will be a draft of uh, the proposed order that the uh, planning office will do the first draft. Uh, Jane and I will review it um, uh, for wordsmithing, and uh, it will uh, be. Um, sponsored by one of the city councilors, and uh, you will then see um, it's moving through the uh, city council process first to uh, one of the committees. They'll have committee meetings where they uh, like to hear from, from uh, 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 the committee uh, on our processes and what we discussed, uh, and then it goes to the full council. So uh, keep, keep a watch on the city calendar for that. Um, and uh, uh, other than that, is there anybody else that has any other business? No. Well, then um, I uh, I'm, I move that the meeting be adjourned. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank Aye. you, Mike. Thank you. Thank right. you. Good night. We'll be missed, Don. Thank you.